So Valentine's Day is over and it's 72 degrees in Pittsburgh in the middle of February. There's a bunch of stuff that's not right right now. So I was like, let's get back to normal and make some videos. I picked up a crap load of fragrances, both from rack stores and niche hall. And so over the next few days, including this video, I'm going to be doing some kind of like fragrance hauls and stuff like that. One niche and one rack store. Today we're going to be doing the rack store one. So without further ado, let's get it. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. This is Randy, AK Fragrance Dude, back with another fragrance video and another cheapy rack store haul. So uh, on Valentine's Day, we were going to go, uh, we went to a couple different restaurants and stuff like that. And then afterwards, we were going to stop at Costco and just check that out because we got a new Costco put in. And so I was like, yeah, why not? But that was closed. And so what was right next to it? A Nordstrom Rack, a Marshalls, a TJ Maxx, and a Ross's Dress for Less. And so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely doing some fragrance hunting. So I went to TJ Maxx, saw a few different fragrances there. Uh, there was some good prices at the Ross's Dress for Less. And then I didn't see anything at Nordstrom Rack. So and then I also bought one from Marshalls. So I got one from Marshalls, one from TJ Maxx, and then also one from Ross's Dress for Less. Uh, they also, two of them, I actually didn't find in the men's section. They were in the women's section. So always make sure to find your women's section. Um, but before we get into these reviews, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you like my content, please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm also over there. So if you could help support me on that side of it, it would be great. Uh, so I'm just going to start out with them here. You know, I don't do much of the presentation, but I did keep them in their boxes. I wore them once or twice, but uh, with that said, I'm just going to go straight through it. If you want to see the presentation, the first one here is by Commodity. It is Commodity Bergamot. So this stuff is sold at Sephora. Um, and I believe it goes for $125 for all the commodities at Sephora. And this one I found at Marshall's. And again, it was in the women's section. Usually the commodities are in the women's section and they're normally at TJ Maxx. That is where I found this one. It was over, uh, usually TJ Maxx has their women's fragrances. And then they also have a little table kind of next to the aisle that has a bunch of their boxed fragrances that are in like, uh, big packs and stuff and then they'll have the bigger fragrances in the boxes like this like commodity bergamot and I got it for $23 I believe the price is an on yes $23 um, and so this is commodity bergamot I've never owned a commodity before I've heard some good stuff about them and this one was just quite interesting so yeah, this is actually really good. Uh, I didn't know much about it, but when I go to rack stores, I like to look on uh, Fragranica. I like to look at Parfumo, stuff like that, just to get a feel of the notes and what people are saying about them. Usually I won't pick a fragrance up unless it has a 3.8 or higher on any of those sites, unless it's a new release, because that's kind of jack shit on there because people are just trolls. Um, but with this one, Commodity Bergamot, it definitely deserved the rating over four because it is fantastic. It's up the uh, same alley as something like your Dior Homme Cologne, your Mercedes-Benz Cologne, which is kind of funny because I have a Mercedes-Benz in this video as well. Um, but it's more of your lemonade, citrusy, fresh, clean type fragrance. The main notes you get in Commodity Bergamot are bergamot, musk, mint, and jasmine. So again, it's that clean citrus. When you first spray it on, you definitely can get a little bit of a florally undertone, but you're mostly surrounded by citruses. You're, you got that bergamot, obviously commodity bergamot. Um, then you also have that lemon in there. It's like a lemon orange mixture underneath the bergamot. It's clean, it's fresh, it's bright, it's effervescent. It is such a nice fragrance. It's one that, um, because Dior M Cologne, you only get about four, four and a half hours out of it, maybe a little bit more. Mercedes-Benz Cologne doesn't smell as good. It's still good. It doesn't smell as good as Dior M Cologne, and that gets about six to seven hours. This one is kind of like a take on that, but more heavy on the bergamot than the lemonish uh, style. It has lemon in here, don't get me wrong, but this one, that bergamot in here is really nice. And then you get that jasmine undertone. And then as you work your way in the fragrance, usually citruses and these type of fragrances dissipate very quickly, especially when you're in the heat. Right now I'm in the cold, so I haven't tested it in the heat, but 
Usually in the heat, citruses dissipate. This one hasn't dissipated really at all. That, that bergamot really stays there for quite some time, like two to three hours. You do get some muskiness and woods as you get to the base. And then again, that jasmine's in there. It's more of a supporting nuanced undertone. But if you're looking for a fresh citrusy fragrance and you see this at your marshals i'm telling you this is one of the best blind buys that i have picked up no joke whatsoever uh, i sprayed it on my hand my wife loves it it is tart especially in the opening it's a very tart citrus if you like those style fragrances those uh real nice uh summer fragrances like dior own cologne mercedes-benz cologne ysl y o fresh jimmy Choo man ice i could go on forever and you want a slightly different take on it that has a little bit of a florally and woods in it it's really nice that is commodity bergamot it is my first one on this rack store haul going into the second one um i actually picked up two of these the one is still in the box and the reason i am not reviewing it is because it's kind of a collector's item now because it's a, a discontinued item but it's by the same brand as this the one i'm going to be reviewing today um, is mont blanc legend night so i have mont blanc legend spirit the original mont blanc legend i have the eau de parfum um, Pretty much anyone, I have, I have the 2013 Special Edition, which if you guys haven't tried 2013 Special Edition, it is the best Mont Blanc pretty much ever released. Uh, the one that I still have in the box is Mont Blanc Legend Intense, which goes for about $200 on eBay right now. I don't know if it's good or not, and I probably won't know for a long time because I'm keeping that and then I'm going to resell it. Uh, I got it for $27 in the clearance section, and I have no idea why it was at Marshall's. Um, but this one was at TJ Maxx. It is Mont Blanc Legend Night. And I had no idea what to expect with this. I haven't smelled it at any of the stores. Um, I think it might be discontinued as well from what I understand. I think Jeff from SoCal Sense told me that. Um, I didn't really pay much attention to it. But I can tell you, this is quite an interesting fragrance. Uh, just like the Commodity Bergamot reminds me of the other fragrances, Dior Homme Cologne and whatnot. This reminds me of three fragrances. So I was talking to a few of my friends and after I bought this and I sprayed it on and I said, uh, it kind of reminds me of some things. And all three of them shouted out like three different fragrances. And I was like, you know what? It actually kind of reminds me of that, that, and that. It reminds me of a lot of Armani Code Profumo. If you mix it with the vanilla style and that mintiness that you get from Versace Eros, and then you also add in the fresh spicy cardamom that is very similar to the cardamom you get in LNDL or La Nuit de L'Homme by uh, Yves Saint Laurent. So it's sweet. It has a little bit of a fresh citrus in the opening. It has that greenish undertone from that mintiness. The main notes that you do, let me just give them to you so you guys can kind of understand what I'm getting at. The main notes in Mont Blanc Legend Night are cardamom, mint, lavender, and vanilla. So, like I said, that cardamom's in the opening, fresh and spicy. It's more of an undertone nuance. You also do get that sweetness in there like you get in the Code Profumo, which is kind of almost that dense sweetness. Uh, and then you also do get some aromatics in there. I believe there's some lavender and stuff like that. But then as you get to the dry down, you get that woodiness, you get that mint and stuff like that mixing with that vanilla. The vanilla comes in, it has a slightly powdery touch to it. It's really actually a nice fragrance. Uh, as far as the performance on this, I only got about six hours. Uh, as far as the commodity bergamot, again, it was around six hours, six to seven. Um, the, this one was six to seven and bergamot was six. So that's not bad. Uh, I think for what it does, it smells really good. It, it, I kind of said to my wife when I first smelled it, it reminded me of a better blended version of Versace Eros Flame if you took out that blood orange. That's kind of what it reminded me of. I mean, obviously there's the mint and stuff that doesn't really make sense, but it's just what I got from it. So if you like those style fragrances, Versace Eros, Versace Eros Flame, y and, uh, LNDL Blue Electric, the cardamom from that, or not the Blue Electric, the LNDL, the original. 
If you like that type of stuff, you like our Money Code Profuma, you're gonna like this fragrance. It's really nice, and right now it is on discounter, still around 40, 50 bucks. And so I would recommend definitely picking it up if you like those style fragrances. What's weird is my wife doesn't like our Money Code line, pretty much the whole line. She thinks it smells like an old lady, but she does like this fragrance. It does have a nice mixture, and it does something that the other ones don't do because it's mixing a little bit of the pieces from each of those into one fragrance. It's a night out, night out fragrance for sure. It's one that I think you can wear in pretty much any season. If you were going to wear it at night in the summer, I would make sure it's not on a very hot night and that you're not over spraying. So that is Mont Blanc's Legend Night. The bottle's pretty cool too. But I always wanted to add that to my collection and I bought it for $24 or $19. I can't remember. All of these were under 25 bucks and I know one of them was 19 and, and it was not the next one. So that was, it was $19. $19 for Mont Blanc Legend Night. This was 23 and the next one was 21. So the next one on my list, I didn't know anything about this and I was trying to get people because I was at Ross's Dress for Less. It was the last store that I went into. And what's funny is that I was just trying to reach out to my reviewer friends and Ross's Dress for Less, it just reminded me of Ross from TLTG. And so I just texted him and I said, do you know anything about this? And it's Mont Blanc, or Mont Blanc. It is Mercedes Benz Eau de Toilette. I said, do you know anything about this? I said, I never see Mercedes Benz fragrances. They're not in my stores. They're not in my Macy's. They're not in my any of my rack stores, not my Burlington's, nothing. And he said, here's my video. He just sent me the video and he was like, yes. Like I, I, I watched his video just for a second and it was just like, the first 10 words out of his mouth is, I can't believe I've owned this and I haven't worn it. It is one of the best, most underrated fragrances out there. While I don't feel that exact same way, I can tell you that this fragrance is actually nice. For the price, it's definitely one that I would recommend you getting your nose on. Um, if you find it for the same price I did, $21, at Ross's Dress for Less, I would definitely recommend it blind buying it because it's an easy wear. I have it on my hand right now. I was just wearing it prior to this. So this is the bottle. It is Mercedes-Benz Eau de Toilette. I'm just gonna get the performance out of the way so we don't have to beat around the bush. This one is also six to seven hours. It's a moderate for, uh, performer, and it's not going to really push out heavily. For the first hour, it's above average, but then after that, it's moderate. Then it becomes more of a skin scent after three to four hours, but you can smell it up until about six to seven hours. So Mercedes-Benz Eau de Toilette. It reminds me of one fragrance that one of my subscribers, um, T-Frag, sent to me, and it was a while ago, and it was only pieces of it, and that I've smelled in Sephora and Ulta, and that is Fahrenheit. Uh, so I don't really like Fahrenheit that much. That violet does give off that petroleum vibe to me. I do like Fahrenheit Parfum. Uh, I haven't tried any of the fresher sides to it, but I just am comparing the violet in there to the Fahrenheit in this, and then I looked it up on... Um, Fragranica and it just so happened that the number one most compared fragrance to this is Fahrenheit. Um, while I don't like that Fahrenheit, the original, because of that petroleum vibe, I do like this. There is that petroleum vibe from the violet in this, but it's just dialed down a lot. Uh, so the main notes you get in Mercedes-Benz Eau de Toilette are bergamot, violet, pepper, and cedar. There's a lot more going on to this, but this is really the ones that you need to know. There's a spice in it. There's also a little bit of a unique spice from the nutmeg in this, but in the opening, you get a nice blend of citrus. It's not overly tart or anything like that. It's just a nice, fresh citrus. That citrus does get overtaken by that violet very quickly. I'd say about maybe 10 to 15 seconds into the fragrance, if not, maybe like 30. Uh, the violet becomes more of the main part of the fragrance with that citrus undertoning as well as that pepper nutmeg kind of spicy undertone. Uh, the violet comes off, it's fresh, it's clean. It also has, again, that slightly petroleum vibe, but not as much as what you get from the Fahrenheit. It's going to be one that's going to be a nice freshie that you can wear in pretty much any season, but I would stick, depending on where you live, where I live, I would say spring, summer, fall. Uh, just stay away from like the way colder months. So Mercedes-Benz Eau de Toilette, it's fresh, it's clean, it's 
Uh, not one of those bright citruses or the bright fresh fragrances. It's one of those just kind of in the middle that will leave you smelling good. It'll leave you smelling clean. And it has almost like a slightly uh, vintage feeling to it, which again, I'm not sure when this came out, but it's Mercedes Benz, so probably late 2000s, early 2000s maybe, I don't know. Correct me, tell me in the comments, I honestly don't know. Maybe I should have looked that up before. But if you like the type of style that the Fahrenheit is, and then you add some freshness, some citruses. Again, I haven't tried any of the fresh versions of it. I know this is closer to the Parfum version of Fahrenheit than the original, uh, because that petroleum vibe is definitely dialed down. So if you like that style of fragrance, you want a little bit more of a unique take that doesn't have that vibe to it. My, I, my wife did get the seal of approval from this. She didn't say it was great. She said it's good. I would definitely like wearing that. It's more of a random pull, and I would agree. It's one that you can use on a random pull to just go run errands. It's not going to be one that you have to dress up or dress down to wear. It's kind of in the middle. You can wear it whichever way you want. I would think that this is office safe as well because it says clean, fresh with a little bit of like an herbally green undertone. It's nice. You also do get some woods a bit further into the dry down about two hours in. Uh, the woods is never really a heavy player in the fragrance. It's more, again, that violet and that violet stays there for a long time. Uh, so that's Mercedes Benz Eau de Toilette. So let me know if you guys have tried these fragrances. Out of the three, I would have to say my favorite pickup from the three is Commodity Bergamot. I didn't tell you the, uh, I said the performance was about six to seven hours. I would say it's more around six, but as far as the, uh, put how much it pushes out, again, I don't wanna give you guys that because this is gonna be worn in the heat. Uh, right now it's more above average for about an hour than it slows down, kind of like the rest of the ones I mentioned that are compared to it. Uh, Mont Blanc Legend Night is again, same thing, a little bit above average for the first hour, then it's more of a moderate scent. Both of them are great, but I would say Commodity Bergamot's my favorite pickup from the three. Uh, slowly follow, I mean, closely followed by Mont Blanc Legend Night and the Mercedes. They're both number two. I can't pick a three or a two out of that, but I would say Commodity Bergamot just because I love that style of fragrance. That kind of almost like sugared lemon, uh, lemonade type fragrance. That is Commodity Bergamot. Really nice. So let me know if you've tried those three. I would definitely recommend if you find them for those prices, all three of them are definitely worth it. All, all of them are great. We have kind of your signature one. We have your one that you can wear um, more of a date night. And then we also have your one that's more of your uh, lemonade slushy wear in the high heat. So it's kind of a unique versatile group of fragrances. But all right, guys, well, I'll be back again. I have three niches that I picked up for tax season. Got my tax money in and I always pick up some niche fragrances. And surprisingly, last year I picked up three fall and winter fragrances that were niche. This time I picked up three freshies. And so beware for that one. It's either going to be tomorrow or the next day, depending on if I get any new releases in. So all right, thank you guys so much. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.